Hey guys, today's video is about how to start a bullet journal. In the beginning of the video, I'll go over what exactly a bullet journal is, and then I'll go over the steps you can take to start your own bullet journal. A bullet journal is basically a planner, but instead of buying a pre-made planner from the store, it's a customized handmade journal that you make for yourself to suit your own individual needs. Whether you're an avid planner or you're pretty new to journaling and planning, a bullet journal is a system that works for almost anyone. And this bullet journaling system in particular works best for people who like to physically write down their to-do lists, goals, and plans, and people who find that other planners just aren't quite the right fit, since a bullet journal is a customized system rather than one that is pre-printed. Obviously, one drawback means you do have to invest some time up front to set up your bullet journal. But if you find that it's worth it for you personally to have a completely flexible system that will exactly suit what you want because you get to make it yourself, then it's most likely worth the time investment in my opinion. Keep in mind as well that you do not have to be good at drawing or have perfect handwriting to start a bullet journal. Most bullet journals that you see online are quite artistic with nice handwriting and beautiful doodles, but the reality of most bullet journalers is that the planners just don't really look like that. There's just a self-selection bias of people who share their bullet journals on the internet tend to have the more perfectly groomed, nicely artistically doodled bullet journals. So don't feel pressured to have a bullet journal that looks like that because you don't have to. When I first started bullet journaling, it didn't really look that great, but it didn't matter because what mattered was the functionality. So make sure you keep in mind that function is really more important than the aesthetic when you start making your own bullet journal. By the way, I will go over a lot of the topics that I cover in this video in more depth in my book, Study With Me, which is all about bullet journaling and especially bullet journaling for students. Okay, now that I'm done with that self promo, let's move on to step number one in starting a bullet journal, which is to gather the supplies you'll need. In my opinion, you only really need two things to bullet journal. You need a notebook. Of course, you can't really bullet journal without the journal part. And the second essential item is a writing utensil. I generally prefer to use a black pen, but you know, this can vary depending on your personal taste. Some other items that I personally consider essentials or just nice things to add on would include a pencil and eraser for sketching out layouts and doodles, some colorful markers, pens, or brush pens for doodling and adding in calligraphic titles, some washi tape or stickers to add in color if you don't really feel like drawing or doodling, and page flags or the little ribbon bookmarks that are included in some journals to help you keep track of what page you're on. The particular brand names of supplies you use aren't really that important, but if you are a stationery nerd like me and you want some recommendations for my favorite journals and pens and markers and all that fun stuff, check out some of the videos and resources that I will link in the description and in the cards, which are on this side. Now step two is setting up the bare bones basics of the bullet journal. That was a lot of the letter B. To learn more about the original building blocks of this bullet journaling system, which was created by Ryder Carroll, check out the bullet journal website, bulletjournal.com. In this video, I'll just provide a bit of a summary distilling the basics into even more basic. And of course, you don't have to follow the rules of these basic things either. Yes, they're the main building blocks, but if you find that something doesn't quite vibe with you, you can just take it out and make it work in a way that works for you. I feel like I'm gonna say that way too many times in this video, but that is the core philosophy of bullet journaling, so don't you forget. So first we have the bullet, which is kind of like a checkbox, but with more options. Next we have the index, which is basically a table of contents in the index, you write down the page number and what's on that page. Pretty self-explanatory. And lastly, we've got the logs or planning pages, essentially. The original bullet journal utilizes a future log, which is basically for a year or more, a monthly log, and a daily log. However, there are a lot of different options that you could use, ranging from multiple years down to 
one day or even a couple hours of a day. The one you personally use, once again, depends on what would work best for you. The ones that I personally use are a yearly log and a monthly log and then a daily log, just like in the original system. But once again, you don't have to do this. Take a look at what types of planners you felt worked best for you when you used pre-printed planners, and then just go ahead and try things out and see what you like and don't like. Now that you've got the basic building blocks down, and most likely you should have already set up your index and maybe a few of your log planning setups, it's time to move on to step three, which is to add even more additional fun spreads. Step A of step three is first to get inspired. You can check out bullet journal content on Instagram or YouTube, or you can get some ideas uh, from my book, hashtag spawn again or from my videos if you like those. And while you're browsing, make a list of spread topics and ways to lay out those spreads that you'd like to include in your journal. Once you've reached like critical mass and you've got this giant list of awesome ideas and you really wanna go try all of them out, take a step back. Don't go too hard, just do one or two things at a time and see what sticks. If you'd like to follow along with an example of setting up a completely new bullet journal, you can check out one of my yearly plan with me videos, which I will link in the description. If you don't find yourself filling something out, you don't have to make yourself keep doing it. For me, for example, I tried to do a monthly gratitude log where I'd write in one thing every day, but unlike some of my habit trackers or other journaling setups, I just never went back and looked at it at all. So obviously that one didn't really work with me, so I just changed it to something else. I changed it to once a week and then that works for me. So don't be afraid. It's not like some sort of personal motivational failing if you don't find yourself filling a certain tracker or spread out. It just means it didn't really work with you and that's fine because Say it with me, you need to figure out and do what works best for you. As you figure out what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep, just swap out the things that didn't really work for more of your ideas from that big long list that you made. And of course, you don't have to keep imitating other people's spreads. When you start off at first, it might be easier to just go off of a layout that someone else has already made and see if that works with you. But you can always go ahead and tweak things or completely come up with your own layouts once you're a little bit more experienced and comfortable with this system. There is no one size fits all approach to setting up spreads or just the whole bullet journaling system in general. Once again, the best thing to do when you're bullet journaling is to try things out and then choose the things that work best for you. Alrighty, I hope you found this video helpful and there wasn't too much annoying self-promotion of my cool book project that I spent a long time working on. Wow, would you look at that? Okay, I'll actually stop now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like more advice and ideas about bullet journaling, I will link some videos in the description. I also upload photos of my bullet journal on my Instagram, at studyquilt, if you'd like to check those out. See you next time!